Hello and welcome my friends, it is finally time for the Telecom War in the playoffs! T1, hi, uh, we are sitting right next to KT, not only in the champ select here, but uh, yeah, also on this fucking roller coaster that uh, we went through. Uh, but yeah, all of that goes out of the window, new patch, Aurora disabled, playoffs locked in, and uh, yeah, what else can we say? Let's talk about the pick band phase. Actually, uh, yeah, Azir should be high priority for both mid laners, right? As always, like it's BDD's pick, right? Faker, if uh, yeah, he's still not feeling too comfortable, right? We had a bit of a break. That is the pick that we uh, yeah go back to. Nasus ban, really interesting, obviously. Uh, yeah, in case you didn't catch it yesterday, we had fucking Nasus Smith, the showmaker. Uh, so that's crazy. Maybe we see that uh, today too. Not sure about BDD, but Faker practiced it, and uh, yeah, obviously he has played it. <laughs> throughout the ages but uh yeah he is decently comfortable with it i i assume well we'll have to see the azir first pick makes uh yeah sense we'll have to keep our eyes open for the <laughs> pretty interesting duo of uh cocky maokai Mako i obviously already banned ivern also uh, pretty powerful right double uh ad carry meta with an enchanter like ivern i'm not telling you anything new we're just going over some of the basic aspects right career not really the most creative region. Um, that's not something that uh, we are all too known for. Maybe in the support position, right? We have Carrier versus Barrel. I think all time record is like 1 7 or something. Uh, the last best of five is two years ago. Barrel was like doing uh, Genshin Impact stuff uh, for a while. Uh, but yeah, uh, uh, Carrier's Barrel matchup is obviously known to be quite bad. Uh, doesn't really matter. Deft, Barrel, Pyoshik. Three DRX players here from uh, not last year, right? But uh, 2020. Ah, rough. They also get Smolder, which is quite a powerful champion, right? You pick it in mid lane, you are bing chilling. Honestly, I think it might uh, yeah, be better than Corky. Uh, also, relatively safe. Um, and yeah, I mean, Corky, his poke is not that relevant anymore. It's still there, it's still a good aspect. But obviously, in terms of DPS, the what is it? The Smolder is just doing way, way more. So that's something. You have the comfort pick for perfect, right? Uh, I remember, like when he started in the LCK, right, making his debut. Uh, obviously, not play uh, like rookie of the split in comparison to Lucid, but yeah, obviously for every top laner, Renekton is the pick for comfort, and yeah, the same goes for perfect. So pairing it up with the Sejuani, which obviously is also a good pick into champions like Azir uh, with the range ultimate, right, having a non-committal engage, Lydia. I don't know, man. It feels Lilia is from for me. It's not an owner champion where I'm like, yeah, that's something where like, yeah, that's good for T1. Uh, not because owner can't play AP champions, nor owner can't play carries. We all know that that is uh, in fact not true. Uh, but it's just not T1's preferred game style. And uh, yeah, I will have to see also double AP mid jungle. It's just a bit rough, right? No CC enabling. Uh, that means like we need to like engage top and or like a CC available uh, top laner and an, uh, an engaged uh, support. It just locks us into like all kinds of things unless we go into suboptimal uh, like setups. Uh, okay, so Seraphine, that's something that, um, uh, what was it? Uh, there was uh, like one region where they picked it and it was crazy. Was it, was it G2 yesterday? Or, yeah, well, whatever. At least, uh, yeah, Seraphine quite good, obviously, yeah. Nila, that's something we haven't seen in a while. Nila Senna is a very good, very potent bot lane. Very aggressive, scales wonderfully well. Obviously pairing up any like scaling melee. Uh, well, I, I don't know where I was going, but picking uh, this up alongside the Olaf, historically something that's quite good, unless the Olaf falls too far behind. The only issue is now, uh, yeah, I don't know, man. This, this, is, this is a relatively short range comp. Versus Seraphine ult. Versus Deft E and R. Versus, I mean, BDD is not really the longest range champion, but his, he can be decently uh, effective, right? He's like, okay. Pyoshik ult, right? So, if T1's comp falls behind, we have no combat mechanics besides, oh, we scale really well. Which, like, they have smolder. They scale pretty well as well. So, um, yeah, in terms of combat mechanics, KT has. Uh, yeah, more decision making process, right? Because they have the range, they can decide do we fight, do we not fight? Because we don't have 
engage uh, in the classical sense. Uh, they can also, if they're first at the objective, completely like piss us in our mouth. Uh, obviously, metaphorically speaking, jeez, my English goes out the window. Uh, because like who is front checking like Zeus if he's already with the team if he is already there first with us that means he can't TP that means we can't make any uh, like map plays like that and also like in Olaf really face checking is just not the greatest thing and Carrier uh, or Guma on Senna and uh, Nila that's just also not what you want but regardless let's get into the game after like rambling on for, for a while we will ramble on for a long long time today regardless so draft I think is I like it, but if I look at Katie's comp, I like Katie's comp just more. Uh, I think Katie's comp uh, doesn't try to do anything too fancy, too special. Very powerful champions uh, locked in into the carry positions, right? Smolder and Misfortune. I think Smolder's the best mid lane, AD carry. Uh, pretty close with Corky, obviously, um, but I prefer Smolder uh, slightly. It's just really slightly. Um, and then I think, I still think uh, Misfortune is the strongest AD carry in terms of damage output, which is kind of what you want, right? The the wombo combo potential, uh, obviously it depends on like other factors, but usually that's quite good. We have to keep our eyes open for Rel, uh, which is like an absolute super pick that just dominates in the LPL, dominated, um, oh, uh, dominated even yesterday, or for me it's the same day because I didn't go to bed, but uh, dominated for Moam, Moam, I can't pronounce names, uh, for DK, right? So that's also something. We have a bit of a like vertical, it's not vertical jungling, a bit of an invade here by owner. Obviously the early game powers of uh, the T1 top side are uh, respectable, right? Or we have gained two plates, or what's, uh, what's the situation top side? Not a single plate lost, so they funneled extra CS and well, like bonus XP into Deft, right? Uh, because Barrel was helping with the Grubbers, while Deft was mostly pushing in top side. So he gained a bit more, uh, obviously, farm and a bit more XP to catch up to uh, Guma, obviously, who is gaining extra XP due to. Uh, what's her name again? Ah, oh, goddammit. Uh, whatever, due to her passive, right? So, uh, yeah, they pick up another set of neutral objectives, which I, I, I think we are not too troubled with that. Uh, because we, we don't want to scale versus KT in a traditional sen sense anyway. I think we want to like get a gold lead uh, where we have like a usable gold lead in the mid game and then leverage that to uh, force the fight uh, like somewhere with a uh, numbers advantage or something um, or catch KT off guard, right? We need to be a bit creative about that. We can't just run at them standard uh, like. like. So again, it's a very calm early game, right? No real lanes were needed as well, right? Um, we saw like, I think like three lane swaps in like three games or in four games, right? Uh, in the DK series, which uh, was a bit interesting, right? So I was like kind of thinking, okay, do, are we going to see more lane swaps uh, in general in the LCK, right? This like the scrim meta, um, okay, let's see. Okay. Um, I think we could have, uh, yeah, tr I mean, if he ults, no, just the ult is not enough. I think we could have gotten the flash there if uh, owner ults, but, uh, oh, I, I mean, if he stays, but nah the, nah, the wave is not big enough. I think we could have, like, overforced there a bit, uh, not with, like, flashing for it, but uh, could have looked for something. Overall, pretty chill here. Total damage to turrets, okay, okay, pretty neat. Okay, we all here? Uh, okay. I mean, it works out. It's enough. They, they have, they have no relevant damage. They, they, no. It's annoying, but they don't really have enough damage here. Faker? Flash forward? I mean. Carrier's uh, heal is, uh, was just barely of cooldown. That was just weird um, that T1 like continued to engage there, right? They could have backed off, I think, a bit earlier. Um, but yeah, obviously it works well. Uh, we pick up the kill first, but for the Lilia as well. Uh, owner, I think our best player this, uh, maybe this year, mm, maybe. 
Yeah, I actually you could say right. He was. I mean, he and Guma uh, are clearly the best players this year, um, or at least so far, right? The year still uh, has like a couple more months, but uh, yeah, interesting. We'll have to see how many stacks BDD has. Actually, I have not paid attention to that yet. Well, I guess we're 12 minutes in, right? Uh, okay, they pick up the second Drake. It's going to be a hex hex toll. That's actually very helpful for us. Um, any item completions? Yep. The bloodthirsters for the bot laners. Um, barrel here. Yeah, kind of caught. Uh, it doesn't have flash. Doesn't have anything. Uma will pick that up. Very nice. Bwah! Hey! I know you're watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you enjoy the T1 content. Let's get back into it. Uh, carrier two levels above barrel. That's also nice. Obviously, Carrier spent more time in the lane earlier. Faker just dodges us to the side, ult someone away. Obviously, that's quite rough. He has no flash, so... Uh, yeah. This is rough, this is rough, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, with Pyoshik old, with Barrel old, there was uh, never really a realistic way he gets out. Uh, but uh, yeah, okay, it happens. Uh, we take the bot lane turret, he has t like first turret blood. So Zeus continues his uh, split push manage. And it's always the same, right? They attack Faker with three people, use multiple ults, and it's good for them, right? They uh, they pick up some gold, pick up some much needed gold for BDD, who's their key carry, right? Their main win condition, uh, besides Deft getting the five man uh, Wombo ult. Faker here again in the side lane, and yeah, sets up the recall, sets up the turret, gets ulted, dodges away. But I mean, Barrel is also coming. We set up the Herald in the mid lane. Faker is moving up. Is he TPing? Please don't. I mean, Faker could get executed. Okay, Barrel flashes for the kill. We take that. Honestly, we take that. Faker ult uh, for getting in a turret. Or like two turrets in mid lane, actually. Let's see. Okay. Are we driving? Straight to Dragon? Is that Dragon versus Rift Herald? The final battle of the League of Legends? Uh, yeah, whatever. Um, that's, I mean, it's the classic, right? Faker getting caught in side lane, which obviously he kind of got caught. But uh, why is it getting caught? Well, let's leave all these like boring stuff around. Let's leave it. We pick up two turrets. Let's go. It's 2-2 in the scoreline, but the gold lead increases. Pick up a dragon, stop the dragon second as well. And uh, yeah, this is just kind of illegal. Well, I mean, if they one-shot Faker, I guess maybe it works out. But uh, like T1 has the Rift Herald, so committing so many members. And then, I mean, I guess at the moment where you're here, you're already like kind of screwed. Faker doesn't have E up again. Obviously only level 12 with uh, just one item, right? Not enough cooldown reduction there for like the spell that's the last to max. You can't see it. My face is over it, but uh, yeah, obviously 4-5-1. Uh, the like leveling right wq max is like how you play the champion so that's that let's see obviously 20 minutes exactly now the baron has spawned all baron damage is quite respectable uh, same goes for kt um let's not make the mistakes that hunger life made and like play a good early game and then absolutely do stupid shit and yeah get the game uh closed because these double AD carry comps that we see all the way everywhere around the globe like once you get them Baron, um, usually they just like screw you over. Oh. Okay, that's uh, unfortunate. Let's see, double TPs here. Guma Yushi, well, kind of stuck. There is also oh yeah. Zeus TPs in now. <sighs> So first of all, I just said don't do anything stupid. Baron has just spawned. What does T1 do? They like go immediately in after like Baron who's just the fucking support. Obviously, yeah, sure, Faker's ult doesn't hit. It doesn't matter if it hits or not. That's not the that's not the point we're talking about. It's about the like the idea of like over chasing this so hard. Like, I mean, look, this was so close. 
very close. Obviously, and maybe the heal movement speed actually enough. But then, yeah, then everyone here comes around. Hey, let's have Faker. Zeus, like, still running, still running, still running, still running. Now he TPs. And, yeah, I mean, Misfortune ult through a choke point while she's behind the wall. It's, yeah, it's, it's an insane. We see what Zeus could do potentially, but obviously he arrived way too late. Uh, not really his fault per se. So it's a, like a one for one in turret, so that's not too bad. If you look at the gold lead is, or like the Baron power play, it's just 1-1. One, one. So uh, that's actually a negative Baron power play. Again, I think I've talked about this so often, but you gain 1.5k from Baron. That's immediately added to the Baron power play. So if your Baron power play is below 1.5, you lost some money. Okay, okay. Offering the W, but okay. Zeus finds Pyoshik here. Blocks the Q. Let's not overextend for a fucking uh, pick. No disrespect Pyoshik. You know what I mean. Um, let's just see. Again, here again, we have the problem of face checking. We just confidently run into all of them. But yeah, the objective is already gone, right? T1 has to take the long approach through mid lane to comfortably step into this. Because like, how the hell are we approaching this? Here, see it? Right? How do we approach? Okay! This! Guma, you are a fucking god. Guma, you're just... I am just like... I, I can't even look, man. Guma, the son of T1. Wait a moment! Pentacle! What the? It's like, I don't even know who's crazier. I mean, it's like... Goddamn, man. It's just like, I'm kind of speechless. Already ranted for about T1 for 25 minutes, but... It's like, what the hell? Guma finds an insane engage. I was like, mm, blah, 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 blah. How, how does T1 fight? How does T1 fight? Blah, 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 blah. Guma is just fucking Giga Chat sprinting in. It's like fucking driving without the Herald into the enemy team. Absolutely setting up a massive, I think, four man ultimate there. Let's see it immediately. Open your eyes and witness this amazing play. I guess kind of set up by uh, the owner sleep there onto Barrel because Barrel's ult is like the biggest first line of gatekeeping. Ooh, BDD, rough flash. Uh, yeah, I mean, it wouldn't have made a big difference. And then obviously, like, no disrespect, but I mean, Olaf just pressing R and just auto attack Q, auto attack Q. But I mean, he's also pressing W and E, by the way. Uh, and uh, obviously an Olaf with ult uh, ignores Barrel's ult, shocker. And then having the uh, center uh, behind you for like the immediate health regeneration, even without the spirit visit, is just quite insane. I mean, just look at this smolder though, man. Four items, like a billion stacks. Uh, it's just a menace. I, again, I think we should avoid fights here at this point and just hope that, uh, yeah, Zeus can split push. He's been stealing uh, mainly jungle camps now in the last couple of minutes um, and just keeping pushing up the waves, which obviously there's no turret, so someone actually has to go there and form up the waves before they uh, like go towards the inhib but you need more than just a what the hell okay t1 wants to threaten baron here 100 percent now because there's a big minion wave at the uh, inhibitor which is something i talked about now for the last minute um i think they have they have to otherwise they lose inhib they will gain pyoshik tp but they already have invested Zeus TP, so it's like at worst. I don't know. I just I have no clue. It's just okay. We get the TP. This is what we really. Oh no, no no. Yeah, I don't know. This was pretty desperate by us. Uh, I feel like I think we could have just like forced the inhibitor. No. It's like oh yeah, KT is like doing a good job defending, bro. They. Okay, Guma just goes in, gets two flashes, immediately dies, I say. I mean, he gets some damage out. There's a flash force by Barrel, but bullet time goes through nearly uninterrupted. And yeah, I think we got out scaled, boys. Yeah, 
Uh, yeah. Nice. Um. Um, can I tap myself on the shoulder at least and say that I was right? <laughs> that our comp can't uh, force fights unless uh, the enemy team has like no summoner spells or doesn't flash or whatever. I mean, look at this. It's like literally Guma is flash ulting in. We get two flashes and a cleanse effect by uh, BDD and barrel flashes over the wall. Like, no. Nothing. There's not even CC uh, to threaten. What's his name? Death channeling the old in face of our team, and I mean the smolder is fully scaled up. Uh, I have no idea. I mean I have an idea why they forced this because they are getting anxious. But I just and we just had like Zeus could have just run through bot lane so many times, and it's like say what up, send someone else, send two people. And, and then we could have looked for like a similar play with Guma and Owner, right? Oh man. Yeah. Okay, where's Owner? Eyes on Owner. Everything is for Owner. Owner, Owner, Owner. He steals us. He's an absolute beast. But can we get away? Guma goes in again. This time they don't have flashes. I guess BDD does not get slapped. Oh, he gets slapped. And he dies as well! They are fucking, I mean, so you... Editor, that's me. Cue the gods clip, man. It's just... Nice. Okay, we end the game here. Uh, can we end the game? Uh, potentially 50 seconds on Smolder. Uh, obviously, this time they don't have flash. They use some of their cooldowns a bit aggressively, right? Chasing us away. Ah... Uh, Okay, we steal the game here away. Um, again, great play by us. Maybe a bit desperate at times. Not, I don't know why, but not realizing the zero split push situation. But yet, we steal game number one away with a cool, creative, nice, but not, not like the draft is not for this game. Not versus the enemy champions. It worked out. Okay, back in the draft. And uh, let's talk about it. Let's talk about this right now. In the morning draft was good but again it was kind of we're drafting without taking a look at what the opponents have because that could have ended quite uh scarily let's just say that again the nasa span right bdd and perfect maybe as well right it's also a top laner obviously uh yeah may not be uh, too familiar with the nasus pick i think nasus is an upcoming champion that you your team needs to be ready for azir after game number one they say okay figure Clearly didn't look too good. What what else can you play? And so far, G1 has not revealed it. Maokai again being banned. Um, I think that's okay, right? Because Maokai is not really the biggest T1 champion, uh, and you just want to disrupt the Maokai uh, like duo, Maokai Rumble, Maokai uh, Corky, stuff like that. So uh, yeah, we like Rumble, we like Corky. So just getting rid of the Maokai just is. Like the most logical conclusion I we can all agree. We take a look at KT. They've drafted the same three champions again. And they look scary. Uh, wait, no? If Azir is banned, Faker picks up the Yasuo. Obviously, this Yasuo can be flexed in mid lane, top lane, and AD carry position. But wow. Now that's something. Like, we're not, and we're banning AD carries, right? Katie, uh, Katie, Caitlyn banned there. Uh, okay, wow. Uh, yeah, uh, just, okay. I mean, it's like, I'm just leaning back and it's like, let's go, just do, do whatever, I'm out. It's like, what is this, like, first rotation? Lilia Senayasu. So we have, Scaling, long range support of AD carry style support that is enabling of range champions or short range AD carries to some extent. Like an AP hyper farming, like teamfight jungler or like skirmish rather than teamfight, but whatever. Anyway, the bands are Talia and uh, Caitlyn. So Caitlyn, kind of just a random AD carry band thrown out there. Talia, yeah, makes sense. If you add Talia to this KT comp, it's just GG. 
obviously Talia like would be then uh, like a bot lane Talia, support Talia, or maybe the smolder goes with the traditional bot lane. Well, whatever. What the hell? Daft? No, you're not him. You're not him. You're, you're not picking Nila. Uh, obviously, they're not like loving Nila for their comp. That would not make the most of sense. But Nila would obviously be uh, like a similar addition to the T1 comp. Obviously, Nila also having the... Uh, what is it? AOE? Uh, like, no is it a knockup actually? Is it, is it coded as a knockup? Well, who knows? For for years for your zoo, right? Because yeah, in terms of knockups, it's uh, but just wait. What the hell is this? Wait, 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 wait. What? Who is AD carry? Who's support? Wait a second. What the hell? I mean. Like, Lilia has to be jungle, Aatrox has to be top lane, this is... This is just... This is not this year? Was it It was it last year or the year there? Like, 2022? 23? I don't even know. We've played this bot lane in our glorious days. Uh, and again, I look at our comp, and I, it, it doesn't look too bad. Right, we have like AP damage, we have like bruisers with Senna, we all like that, it's always cool. Uh, yeah, we have a wind ball, which I don't know what that does, but I guess it protects us from poke. Uh, again, questions like how do we engage? Well, I guess like Lilia flashes in with Q and sleeps five people, or Lee Sin insects, or I don't know, Aatrox flank, or Yasuo uh, QE flashes or something. I don't know how we engage. What kind of worked out last time? It's just like I'm not questioning it. This time I think it's it's actually kind of better than than before. But I just I'm just ready to be like impressed uh, by I don't know if it's creativity by T1 or like desperation, right? We we can't do anything from the standard line of play, so that's why we grab this. We 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 don't pick just, like 80 carries mid lane, like no Zeri, no Smolder, uh, no Corky. No, nothing like that. Uh, and actually, the first time we have a T1 skin, owner can't even play his own T1 skin first. Carrier plays T1 Lee Sin before owner on stage. Hiya. <sighs> but wh wh whatever. Oh, wait, Deft? There's still the Shattering Strike by Battle but. Oh, no, he actually leveled W. I think it's W. I only have a few games on Rel. Okay, interesting flash, but oh, you follow that carrier. Flash forward. Let's go. There's the ignite. Uh, um. I I have no words. Q. Flash by Pyoshik over the Q. I have no idea what's going on. I look and I see. I mean, I think we like our kill. Tr uh, kill. What is it? Kill split more, no? Chunking up BDD here as well. Just helps the laning phase. Collecting a few souls. Owner just starts red buff. Uh, that's not red buff. That's a red camp, but it's actually not red. Barrel has already respawned, but uh, Guma is still fine. Gets the most part of the camp. Sad that we don't see XP in this uh, in this iteration of uh, broadcasting. This is a fucking wild early game. Top lane, rough. Uh, not sure why it's that bad, but uh, I guess I guess it's just how it goes. Okay, Faker sets it up, but uh, yeah, there are randomly three people in my mid lane. Oh, wait, right. I guess two extra people. Uh, yeah, I mean, if if it was just like, if it was just BDD, I think like you get the kill, right? Faker Q is forward, gets the knockup, follows up with the old. He and Guma get the kill, pretty straightforward. I I feel it's like Faker's trading so aggressively, but it's like, hi, yeah, it's just so similar to game number one where T1, hey, we reflected some cool, unique champions that work well together, but oh, we have to play like so much better, right? We have to get really the most out of these champions. To make them work right this is like uh i don't know you have to play okay that's unfair ah come on the w is enough 
Ah, yet. Uh. Okay, and uh, I, uh, another time he calls jungle. That's not even jungle, that's support, man. Support rel has been more in mid lane than in bot lane, or what? Well, didn't work out. At least owner is still farming up. So we're winning in farm, like in mid lane, in jungle. Uh, in bot lane, I'm not going to do math. It looks good. And yeah, there are three people. We get to sleep, but we don't have any damage really as a follow up, right? Zeus is just like, yeah, not doing anything real, really. So they are outscaling us. And they are the easier to play comp, and they also win in the early game. Not looking too good, but okay. If I've learned anything, it's like it's KT versus T1, man, and it's, anything can happen. Aatrox just oh my god, it's getting worse and worse, man. The CS lead is just growing, man. It's like worse than inflation. Ah oh, yeah, man, help my Aatrox. He's on fucking like put him on social we welfare or something. Okay, flash forward, barrel doing the thing, bomb comes after, fake it, it's an okay old, perfect, falling, let's see what carrier can do afterwards, get another neck up on the barrel, Q doesn't connect, following all in, but BDD and death still full HP, we get the sleep, oh, 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 oh my, oh my, shit, bleh, <laughs> well, whatever, can Faker win that 1v1, well, just smolder, just smolders away. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, but again, we had to, like, just pull so many rabbits out of the hat. Oh, man. But, uh, well fucking played. Much needed gold for our champions. Well, Drake is spawning in 30 seconds, so let's take a look at the inventories and the summon spells. Oh, summon spells all up. Would have thought, right? The last fight is fucking ages ago at this point. And, uh, yeah, item completions, first items across the board. Some are, like... Working towards the second, but uh, yeah, nothing substantial picked up there. Uh, lots of AP with the Needless Leaf for owner, so if he gets to do something crazy, trust that there's some damage to be done. Same could be said for death, right? Uh, like an ult or like the center of the ult is going to do crazy damage. But uh, yeah, again, KT with uh, like the super standard, super effective, pretty uh, good comp. And we with the fucking solo queue gank squad. Uh, let's just see what we can do, honestly. Uh, this setup here is already uh, very, very much needed. Uh, we need to have like at least multiple angles to uh, in, like enter the fight. Otherwise, again, how do we just run at them? Run through the poke? It's just not happening. Uh, KT on the other side, they want to force a fight here. Uh, with Feral Slash, obviously. So uh, there's something that we need to be careful of. And... Uh, even the the what does it the the opposite of that right them not forcing a fight is also scary for us right because again uh, they have deft will just throw shit at us and uh, yeah we also don't like that they don't need to panic too much right it's just soul point but uh, we'll have to see here carrier goes in so this is all five members of T1 just honestly standing there well they pick up the mid lane turrets so uh, it's very similar to. Uh, uh, yeah, T1's punish uh, in game number one, uh, where wait a sec, wait a moment. Uh, okay, yeah, goddamn, they picked up three turrets for Soul Point. Yeah, uh, Atlas, yeah, you're correct. T1 again has to. Do everything. I don't know why they draft themselves into these situations, but that's just... It's the oldest thing for T1. Okay, Pioshik maybe caught? Well, not really. Uh, but hey, we, we secure the... Uh, what is it? The Scuttlecraft, that's something. Faker all the way, all the way in mid lane. At least uh, stopping an inhibitor take or something, I don't know. Hey, Boomer run. Okay. And we're looking for the 20 flank angles. Carry here getting chunked, but who's chunking who? Perfect. Carry don't overforce with ult or something. Okay. Faker and the Renekton both miles away. Faker is so far away from this. Are we just hoping for owner to steal this miraculously? Well, sadly not. And Faker TP still, so uh, just terrible. Uh, 
Hi. Hi. Come on, man. But I'm trying. Oh, wait a second. We have a TP. Carrier is just immediately dead. Carrier TPs all the way over. It's a fucking disaster, no? It's a fucking disaster. Oh my god. Oh my god. Flashes forward. Just dies. Gets an insect kick. Well, there's the five man sleep. Faker still farming mid lane, brother. But uh, yeah, he just joins the fight. Gets an ult. Uh, well, there's the center ult. Man, here we see the potential, man. If they set it up correctly, you just... You actually can win, right? At, at least right now. Now, after the fight, I don't know. Smolder now has five kills. It's like... This is the same again with game number one. Obviously not exactly, exactly. Of course, just Guma is... I mean, let's not say anything, man. It's been consistent all year, but that was just not it. So they do on the Baron here. Uh, and, uh, well... How do we enter? It's the same as last game where, like, we have no one to actually just run in. Well, that's at least a good stopwatch. Owner is there on the side, ult, but it's like, we're going for perfect. Not sure if that's the target. Where's actually our team? Well, it's somewhere there. Faker goes into ult barrel. Well, it works at least for a couple of seconds. Then he gets the seed again and just dies. They're all too mobile uh, for Zeus to land any Qs on, right? Like, Deft has W, he doesn't even have to use the Flash. BDD has the Flash, has the E, and I mean, he has 30 movement speed anyway. Uh, yeah, I mean... This game... I, again, it's 6. Oh my god, the T1 fan, he's so salty. It's like, if T1 loses, it's always draft. If T1 wins, they're the best. Well. If we like, if we watch games like this, around, uh, it's not like I have not said the draft was shit. Like from the first fucking second, I said the draft is shit from the first fucking second. Uh, yeah, so we go one one here. Means longer series, but it's like, uh, yeah, this this just absolutely dog shit draft getting punished super hard. It's like literally solo queue. We pick Azir, so that's good. Uh, I, I just uh, we're on blue side. It's just it can, just can go up from here. They uh, if they are going to pick Smolder again, and if we're going to pick Lilia Senna again, I just might just slightly lose my mind here. I mean, it's like we know T1. Yeah, we can be stubborn, but please, just come on, man, just pick the Smolder as AD carry or something. Uh, just don't give it over again. Don't give Smolder again. We just got Omega cooked and yeah, we can cope. Oh, he got so fat. He had five kills and yada, yada, yada. Yeah, let's pick the Olaf, the Smolder counter. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's going to just slap the Smolder. Wait, what the Azir? What the hell? No, no, just... Yeah, you just pick... Like, we are literally giving them whatever the hell they want. How? Just how? But Tom, what are you doing? What is this coaching? Like, they banned Senna now, and now we have Olaf without Senna. It's like, it's getting worse. Like, every draft gets worse. Maybe our compositions not. Our compositions have at least been functional as a whole. That's at least something, right? That's not a given for T1 comps. I mean, goddamn, man, they banned Caitlyn as well. <laughs> no, not up with Caitlyn. I want Caitlyn Lux, Caitlyn Bart. Give me something, man. Ay, ay, ay. I, d I just don't even know what we pick. Obviously, champions like, ah, oh, yeah, misfortune this, misfortune that. Uh, rel this, rel that. Red sl slam and misfortune rel in our composition, and somehow it will work out. Is, is this is not a Jin Yumi angle, bro? No? If this is a Jin Yumi angle, man, video is over. It's just I'm going to say it right there. Varus. You know attack speed Varus is not viable anymore, right? Kuma, have you read the patch notes? Someone DM him fast and say, tell him to buy lethality and shit like that. Sad, man. It's so annoying that Riot Games just forces champions into like certain playstyles. 
especially like when Varus was just so good and cool and unique with having the poke and the attack speed build. Okay, yeah, the rel has to be picked here. I mean, it's like not picking rel, yeah, like wild. At least now for the first time in this series, we have engage. Yes, they go to bed, they dream, what champion do I want to play? What compound do I want to play? And this is what appears. This is like literally, it's like nearly the, it's the, it's the strongest champions that you can pick on this patch. They get it, they get them all together. And T1 is just like, hey, yeah, do you know of our Lord and Savior fucking Olaf? Uh, let me tell you about his ability to Ragnarok down your lane. Uh, yeah, I just, I have no clue. Let's just get into it. Uh, yeah, what the hell is this deft guy doing in top? Luckily we have this ward. Luckily we have this ward. Otherwise, uh, yeah, let's not talk about this. Okay, maybe this ward will help us and uh, like lane swap stuff won't be as bad, but the smolder is like winning the mid lane. Hello. Why is that little dragon that's outscaling everything winning? Fucking stupid. What is Zeus doing? He's just dead, no? Oh, they don't collapse onto him. Okay, TPs. Actually, not too bad. He TPs to the wave, picks up the XP. Maybe some farm. Actually, bar uh, not barrel. Death recalled. So that's something. Let's see how much he can pick up. Obviously, it's going to be a bit annoying, but uh, he'll manage. He'll manage. Catch up XP and whatever else works as well. Bot lane, it's yeah, it's fine. Boom up, down a bit in CS, right? Obviously, if you look, perfect. Didn't farm a single minion on that top wave. Anything else like positive to talk about? Maybe. <laughs> nah, man. It's like they literally give them the same draft three times, or like the same three core champions, and then just like bot lane slaps something different. Give you either a misfortune or Zix, and then support actually just does not matter. Uh, we're contesting grubs or something. Like misfortune is down in bot, but uh, does that even matter? Do we just not care? Hey, that was a fucking strike. Nice bowling owner. Okay, we're looking onto barrel. Force of the flash. Carry already gets so much damage by BDD, and that little dragon just has not done too much. Top lane wave also has not crashed into turret, so that's also like uh, not great. Guma, uh, not sure if you got the message, but you are out of position. Why didn't you cleanse the stun? Well, I guess he just runs it out, but uh, whatever though. It's just so so top lane is not as great as we wanted. Jungle just honestly sorry owner, it's like really sorry, but jungle just does not matter. Uh, you're not playing like nidderly uh, with like three winning lanes. It's not the same. Especially top is losing, mid lane is effectively losing, bot lane is behind. Uh, it's just... Yeah, three losing lanes and Lilia in the jungle versus the tank Sejuani with still her ultimate in the game. Uh, okay, let's see. They are up the ults. There's the sleep and... Uh, I think they really wanted the kill for Guma, but yeah. They flash, W. That's just not enough. It's just not enough. We didn't obviously get to catch everything. They used two flashes at least for that. Uh, Zeus obviously, was Ghost and uh, the ult. But uh, yeah. Yeah, it's just like, yeah, sure. Looks good. Blue ahead, right? Besides, uh, obviously, Guma who didn't get the kill in comparison to Deft who has more CS <sighs> and a kill uh, yeah let's just see oh they're going to do it again we don't even have uh, what is it yeah we don't have old yet again like maybe help help owner help help Faker has no TP help help yes the old now Let's see, there's the bowling ball, it misses! Oh, come on! There's the... Wait, owner doesn't have ult either. What is the cooldown on that? 
Okay, at least it works out. It could have been so much better. It could have been so much better, but we, we take it. Honestly, we just take it. We take the small wins that we can get. Oh no, Zeus, watch out the queue. Okay. It's like it does not matter. It does not matter. Anything that's going on. So long as no one is 10 and 0. Like, so long as this fucking smaller guy is still farming. It does not matter. They're looking at the Ocean Dragon, so it's like a neutral trait. At least uh, that's something. We're picking up the first blood turret here, hopefully. Deft could look for an old angle, but. T1 is just clearly saying, yeah, you better not be doing some stupid shit. Okay, so let's talk about uh, what we can expect in the next minute or so. Obviously, uh, Hexhack Dragon as the second dragon. Still pretty good, right? It's not soul and no nothing, but uh, especially for T1, right? As we need to be a bit more assertive in this one. We see already that they are swarming out, right? Uh, add some wards in the inventory, set the wards, clear some wards. Um, 49 seconds, maybe uh, still some resets uh, coming in for uh, owner or carrier, right, he has to recall, the herald, uh, yep, resetting, buying wards, coming back, right, and uh, yeah, see the, the vision that uh, KT had established around the river has been pushed back, now uh, Pioshik is running around. I don't think uh, KT again in, in any situation where they need to be bothered at all. T1 with the rel, it's a very big difference to like what we had in the other two games. Um, finally, something with uh, agency. It's not a Lee Sin that has to find the correct angle. It's not a, a center, right? Uh, it's it's something that just smashes fingers on keyboard. We go in, fuck it, we ball. Uh, and it it actually like is working. <laughs> uh, yeah, control mage, control mage meta because they're not just going to randomly die if you pick Katarina or some shit like that. Okay, I don't agree with this, but at least they're doing something. Just go in. Oh my god, he stays alive for so long. Owner will fall to the smolder, gives over a shutdown. That's not the right target, man. Yeah, uh, it's just like this could have been a bit more coordinated, no? Oh, yeah, cool. Faker gets caught again. And BDD picks up another kill. Uh, yeah. Uh, like, they, they, this is just, I don't know, man. Like, pick Nasus and just farm top lane against the tank or some shit, right? You just outscale. Uh, it's literally just, hey, I pick up a turret, I pick up two kills, I have fucking 200. 30 CS at 21 minutes. Uh, I mean, obviously, this is uh, unfortunate. <laughs> There's a random ward on both sides next to where you're recalling. It's like, yeah. I mean, not only is there a random ward, right? There are also like two people next to the smolder coming over, ready to kill you. Uh, I look at this. He's already scaled up. Calls the old. Boom, gets a nice chunk damage there onto our carries. Actually, our team is our carries, so everyone. Wait, Alistair ult? Wait, when was Alistair ult used? Wait, what did I miss? Oh, Alistair ult into Guma ult. Okay, cool. Zeus, hit the turret! Hit the turret! Bro, what are you doing? Oh, come on, man. It's like no one looks at Dragon. No one looks for, like... Re re like relevant split push play I, I mean that's that would be our option right they could also look at least for like a 2v1 situation forcing Zeus away or like forcing Arthur's old or something no one's willing to do anything and for Katie it's like again well like we say it or I I I say it the third time in this series why the hell should Katie do anything they just they have no pressure no nothing they can just mm, mm, oh, oh yeah new wave q q q q q uh, new wave q q q q q farm up more and more and more stacks on smolder right for for them they don't care right they have no train to get no bus to to ride they can just wait sit here all night wait and farm up smolder 
till he can just yeah i don't know one shot whatever so now bdd we get some dragon on dragon action here uh in the meantime t1 is like oh yeah let's start dragon uh baron well i don't know how they saw bdd on that but but well, let's just see they're tp'ing in with the renekton we are peeling away why are we peeling away they we had a numbers disadvantage uh, i just can't speak because i can't believe it okay 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 establishing control in the area bdd is in base do we know that i don't think so we're doing the baron but uh yeah i mean again there's Pioche who has Q flash R. There's Deft who can just press R. Okay, let's see, let's see. Wait, where did Zeus come from? Invisible TP. And he just gets away. Great. Carrier caught or not? Flash forced. Nice, nice. Okay, getting some cooldowns. Finally, T1 is playing the League of Legends. Barrel comes out of base with the Varmox. Okay, that's crazy. But... Okay, Carrier doing his thing. He has to CC them. Will sacrifice his life for the Smolder. But we should be able to get away here. But again... Um, do, do I say the standard line of... Look how much we have to do to get basic shit done. And uh, in the end, they still pick up a kill. They still pick up a turret. Uh, kill goes to Smolder. Ay, 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 ay. This is so scary. And also, like, where's our siege? Hello. Hello. We only have... I mean, we have two more minutes. Okay, two more minutes. That's doable. So the plan is going top lane turret. Because obviously top lane auto turret. That's a lot of money to be collected. Uh, yeah. 12 CS per minute, man. That is insane. Pain, but obviously he's like eating a lot of Pioshex farm, um, right? No, f no, no. Faker is farming well, but he's still getting Flame Horizon, so just crazy. Okay, let's just see. Hello. Oh, we can't even step up because he does uh, extra true damage shenanigans to the wave. Oh, I love that for me. Come on, Zeus. You just need to stand there, throw some Qs. Get the top lane turret. No panic. No nothing. Yep. Have Faker and Carrier be the... There was a term for that. Jugglers or secret agents, protectors, ninjas, submarine. I, I don't know. There was a pro proper term for like the in-between lane guys. I don't know. Regardless, pick up two turrets. Nice. Gold lead increase. Does it matter? Absolutely not. Yeah. So again, it's the same game as last time. We look at BDD and let's just hope that this guy cannot Q us. If he can, we just GG. Let's see. Okay, owners has the smite ready. No, 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 no need to fight. No need to fight. No need. Hello. Like BDD and Deft will just press R in that choke point and we die. Okay. I don't care anymore. We don't need to look. Nice wall, nice screen, nice light, nice camera, nice people watching. And yeah, I just don't need to see it much more. The moment the smolder died, uh, everything was achieved that mattered. TP into mid lane, Pioshik tries his very best. Uh, should probably try some more, but uh, T1 will end this game here at uh, 34 minutes. Ah, uh, man, that guy. He has, yeah, yeah, I, I think the castles just said it. The QSS and BDD's inventory was just bought, right? I remember looking at, uh, and I just saw four items. Okay, so T1, again, they make the impossible possible. The entire game, again, on a on a knife's edge, right? It's like, the smolder just needs one good fight. He insta-kills everyone. The team instantly blows out of proportion. They destroy everything, and we fall so much farther behind. I just... Uh, so silly please just ban smaller or pick it yourself i have no fucking clue why we have to go into these games that are so hard to pull off because smolder just scales freely in mid lane it, it, sorry for a but it just does not fucking matter what champion you have there 
Okay, so wait. Uh, sides have swapped. Obviously, KT now again on blue side, right? Blue side, 100% burn right so far. Uh, we are going to put an end to that, right? With a uh, reversed pick ban. They're going for the little. Oh, smolder, smolder. No, on our side. Yep, yep. Pick that, Sajuani. Let's go, let's go. Let's, let's, yeah, let's change draft. Let's see how how well KT is doing with uh, like Lilia and uh, I don't know, Nila and uh, Senna. No, 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 owner. We like you, but come on. One game of tank duty. Yes, yes. The battle, Sajuani. You get to build Zeke's Convergence. It's okay. No need for shield item. Even though it's better, like you, you, you can't play battles at Juani. Okay, uh, great. We have Smolder on our side. Now we can breathe. Now we can just scale. Ah, oh, that's such a great, like that's such an amazing thing to have for like match point, right? Where you know it's like maybe you're a bit it's like ah, oh, I didn't get the best amount of sleep. Like maybe like my situation where you have not slept for like over, I don't know, twenty hours, something, whatever. Uh, and you're like, um, maybe I need to go to the toilet, and then you're getting angsty, ang angsty, right? Uh, but now we have smaller wind condition on our pocket. We just need to be bing. Wait a second, that's a vein top lane blind pick. What the hell? Well, I guess NAS is banned. It's no W, so that's that. But okay, vein versus Corky Lilia. Does not sound that great. Now uh, there's uh, what's there? What's there? like? What's some cool misfortune combo that's still available? Uh, do we just pick the Braum here so that they don't pick misfortune, or do we pick? Uh, do we go double AD carry again? Caitlyn Luxor or something? Caitlyn Bard? Senna is still there as well. But Senna, Caitlyn is just like, ah, I don't know, man. Caitlyn, just, I don't know, man. We are like opening like all kinds of boxes for like wild compositions. Let's just see what the hell is going on. There are like all kinds of like Braum gameplays, like mind plays going on, I feel like. Um, right? Uh, well, like the Braum uh, misfortune stuff. But like, I don't know if the teams actually like bother to think about that. We just get Ezreal Karma to uh, like force the Caitlyn uh, Lux lane to like struggle a bit, right? Due to the pushing power. Um, let's just see. Let's just see. Caitlyn Lux. Okay, Kara gets his Lux. Guma gets his uh, Caitlyn. Let's think about the win rate of the Caitlyn. In case you don't know, it's like 90 something percent. Guma still has only one loss on the pick. Uh, that I think was in uh, two years ago at MSI or some, uh, something like that. Uh, Faker picks Smolder in mid lane. It's like I don't know if, how experienced it's on that. Who, who knows? Like who actually knows? We have fucking three AD carries, a luck support. Let's just let's just go, man. This is T1 is so wild with these drafts today, and honestly, this is the most meta. <laughs> draft i think they've picked today honestly because it's like multiple ad carries or something it's like i don't like, let's just not even bother let's go into the game okay give me your t1 fighting let's go i don't know what to talk about the draft actually katie's draft the more i look at it actually it's pretty pretty yeah, damn good right your top side balls your bot side is like being chilling farming and like has good damage utility like Corky is still fucking amazing. Uh, yeah, but let's talk about the lanes, right? Owner like has to just pay all the attention, right? It's like Pioshik should not bother anyone, right? So owner's job is just like don't farm any camps, just sit on Pioshik's back and just like protect your lanes, right? Lanes are so vo volatile. Uh, like if Zeus falls behind, he's just crocodile food. Uh, I mean, Faker should not fall behind. He's just being, should just be being chilling there in mid lane, right? We've seen it all series long. Smolder, just hit you, hit you, hit you, farming up the minions uh, and bot lane. Yeah, uh, I'm a big Caitlyn enjoyer. 
when I'm playing uh, the League of Legends bot lane, I will always pick Caitlyn. I will, uh, yeah, give you a big headshot. Um, but uh, yeah, Deft obviously, I mean, throughout all these uh, little years that he has under his belt, has played the Ezreal quite a bit. 4-0, uh, yeah, For some first picks here. Is this Faker's like 89th different unique champion? Okay, so there are the level ups. Q goes absolutely wild. Heal comes in. Okay, okay, okay. Bring up the win rate while we're getting cooked. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the observer team or stat team, whatever, they're definitely hired by KT. They know how to jinx us. Faker of 78, so we're not by 80 yet. Uh, but yeah, he's doing well. A bit low, but uh, yeah. Should be okay. Let's see for like what build uh, he goes for. Top lane matchup. Uh, yeah, I mean, I better not say anything like range top laners, man. You fucking. Yeah. I mean, there's oh, there's worst thing, right? Uh, I think the worst thing that I ever come across multiple times actually, uh, especially at the beginning of the season. Is Top lane Cassiopeia. Ay, 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 ay. My poor little Gwen and Irelia. <laughs> it's like, ah, uh, i uh, just getting cooked. Regardless, uh, yeah. Range top lane are bad. I think we can all agree. Let's see. Can Zeus get the, the solo kill here? Okay. Nice. It's still working out, right? We still have 500, 600 K gold. Okay. 600 gold lead, right? Bot lane struggling, right? Uh, not that far behind in the end, right? If you look. It's even CS. Uh, it's like that even. 50-10-50-10. Zeus is evil. Evil, man. Condemning to miss the cannon or deny the cannon. That is just straight up like bullying. Baker here. Annoying. Fishing for something. Oh, carry it. Wait, what? why are we getting dove? What the hell? What the hell? Ah, yeah, yeah, man. Our Caitlyn lane is getting bullied. Okay, picks up two grubs under Pioshik's nose. But, uh, yeah. Let's just see. Ah, yeah, yeah. Oh. You up. Nice. Yep, yep, yep. Okay, it's getting better, it's getting better. I like what I see, I like what I see. Caitlyn also taking turrets, that's literally everything that matters, everything that you should ever care about. Oh man, it's just so beautiful. <laughs> okay. Oh, can we get the trap? We get a trap and we get a snare, another trap? Nah, double trap doesn't work. But uh, yeah, turret getting harassed, we need to be a bit careful, right? Mana and uh, overall cooldowns a bit. A bit tricky, right? And uh, if you look at uh, Beryl's inventory, he's going to be healed up. He also has the heal, so uh, let's not overextend ourselves, right? Uh, mid lane situation, completely fine. Again, we are winning. Faker even, absolute giga chant. Bias a cull as well. Uh, okay, flash forward, double sleep. Get the ults or like the CC abilities channeled. Faker TP's in. Let's see, owner, no smite, no nothing. There's the Faker ult. Is a bit annoying. Overall, doesn't do too much of anything. Not too sure why we overly committed for this. Uh, like, sure, fighting is cool, but that's not. Um, yeah, I mean, perfect, just in pain. Oh my, look at look at his inventory. Oh, okay, he can at least buy some offensive items. <laughs> so, like, if it's just boots, I would have cried. Again, no faker stats. When when, I, when we see faker uh, things, I will let you know. If he comes in from Zeus, what did he buy? Who knows? I don't know. Ah, come on! We didn't even get that other grub. Okay. Uh. Yeah. Okay. Zeus bought some items. Owner goes in. Doesn't get it. Well, whatever. Faker just has one plate, right? The only were two on it, so he gets a plate. Uh. Maybe no, he does not get the turret. Wait, barrel. That's unfair. Faker has flash and everything, and E. 
Wait, he doesn't get out of E-range. That's unfair. That is very much unfair. Not good. Oh. No E. Okay, so perfect Noir. But uh, yeah, this is a bit of a damper. But again, this game, we are the ones that are being chilling. We don't need to care. It's like just smiles. Uh -huh. Our top lane Vayne is doing well. Let's just hope that we're not team fighting with her against this like long range poke core of Katie. Owner here and perfect. Having a bit of puffle. It's always fun, right? You trade uh, the what is it, the Rift Herald for just directly first blood turret. It's just nice. Why are the, the what is this lane split? Why are Zeus and Faker sharing first blood? Who's in top lane? No one. They're just going to get a free first blood, not first blood. They're going to get a free turret that was full HP. Sure, it's going to like take a while, but uh, do we have enough damage to take this down? Well, I guess if no one is coming, actually we have. Then I'm not going to say anything. Uh, they're obviously going to get another charge in, but Carrier... Oh, Carrier does not have ult. If Carrier had ult, this would not have been a problem, but now this is a problem. Ah, oh, come on! I just want to uh, point middle fingers around. What the fuck? Just so disappointed. Like, what? what is Zeus achieving there in bot lane? I just hate it. I just hate it so much. Such unnecessary goal being given to the enemy team that could have been avoided so easily. But we had Faker Zeus share like gold and bot. Like sure it helps that we had both of them there to take the turrets faster. But it's like where's carrier? Where's his ult usage? Oh, diving perfect with TPs. It is actually the vein who was kinda in the rest in bot lane, right? TP'd away from a potential play there by a Pyoshik and uh, the Corki. Not sure how realistic it was, but hey, okay. we'll pick up a kill. Actually, Vayne picks it up. But now, uh, yeah, bot lane turret will be uh, traded for top lane turret. We just get an extra kill. Sure, invest the extra summoner spell. But uh, yeah, who cares? Like, perfect is just going to hate his life. Regardless, uh, 20 minutes we have. 380 carries, one of them is a smolder, one of them is a vein. Uh, if the Baron says anything, right, he has to pay uh, protection fees for us, right? He's just staying in our rift here with us. Uh, because we could crush his skull at any moment now. So, uh, yeah, 25 minutes, right? Dragon appears in a minute. We have like some semblance here of control for Baron. Barrel uh, does not have flash yet, so free food. Uh, TPing in for the Baron immediately. Uh, yeah, again, the Baron just was allowed to stay on our rift uh, because, like, look at the DPS we have. That was a nice ult there by Deft, but uh, that's about it. Come on, can we can we get the, the objective here? Okay, actually, Pyoshi got so close to it, uh, my Guma died. Wait a second. Faker also potentially in trouble. Oh my god. Owner is a hero. Oh, come on. The burn's not enough. Uh, okay. Uh, messy. Yes. Uh, yeah, but actually this is a win, by the way. Uh, it doesn't matter that we just lost all our members. Uh, we got Baron, which means it doesn't even mean uh, that we can push. Who the fuck cares? I don't care. It just means oh, there's no Baron on the map. So if we get randomly aced or some other bullshit happens, there's no Baron that could immediately end the game or something like that, right? Okay, let's see, let's see. Okay, there's a TP. There's a TP. Attention, attention. Let's see. Perfect. Okay, that's your moment. Okay, he goes on to carrier. Yoshi kills, steals the kill, true, but that's on carrier, right? He should have landed the, the root or the Q, whatever, on the, uh, what is it again? On the teleport. Okay, hey, they're taking our turret. That's illegal. But, uh, yeah, actually, by the way, we're still ahead in gold, so it doesn't matter, I want to say. Obviously, sadly, for us, right, or our vein, 
there are no uh, turrets anymore. Like Zeus, uh, what are you doing now? Inhibitor turrets or something like that? No, what? Yo, like three and a half items with QSS on vein. It's Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, man, this vein is a menace. Let's just hope that uh, we're not calling it over or her over uh, for some team fights. Because uh, I don't want my vein on the same screen uh, as. Uh... Okay, who got it? We got it. Nice, we take it. Like, in the, in the past fights, right, you had the Olaf with the ghost and everything, so, like, he actually could help. But, uh... oh god, this GG, no? Yeah. Like, uh, it's like, we just have these people on the same screen so that they both can be caught. <sighs> That's just uh, rough. Uh, hello, 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 hello. Pew. That's everything that we have, by the way. Owner ult is literally 99% of us. Okay, let's see. Oh, perfect. Okay, wait. No, wait for the recalls to finish. No, 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 no. Oh, my. I mean, he doesn't have sleep, so it doesn't matter. But we don't want to get hit. Faker stacks. Check. Hello. Any TP angles for perfect? He's TPing on the wave. There's the ult. Decent damage. Oh my god, Pyoshik, no, you thief, you... Ah, bleed. Zeus, okay, uh, bro, chill. Okay, uh, wait, actually, are we going for this? Faker flashes over the wall, immediately dashes back. BDD gets a random shield. Oh, for fuck's sake, Zeus finishes off. And a uh, death timers are 50 seconds, but they have Baron. We have a wave, whoop. Picks up barrel. Ah, how beautiful. A deft skin executing barrel. That's betrayal on a different level. Uh, we should be able to win even against Baron minions here, right? It's just deft. It's just deft. So okay, somehow out of nowhere we just randomly win the game at 30 minutes. It's like I don't I just don't even care anymore. This series was exhausting. <laughs> like all these games with the co uh, not the copy. With the uh Defend the waves, owner, please. Body block. There's the next one. We have 380 carries. Actually, not three left. Uh, yeah. Nice. Three, one, just like DK. Uh, yeah. If I'm Gen G, like, honestly, I, I don't want to mess with these guys that don't want to pick Smolder, right? Ay, uh, yeah, yeah. Alright, thank you all for watching. This video was probably really fucking long. Uh, well, I now will have to uh, spend like the next three fucking hours or so to edit this. I, I hope you had fun. I hope I did a good job in rambling while T1 did some plays. Anyway, we're going to see probably, well, actually, who knows, right? It's like, is it going to be uh, Hangwa? Is it going to be Genji? I think in any case, it's going to be a tif difficult, but also an interesting matchup. Uh, T1 looked fine. I agree with the like sideways thumbs. Uh, wasn't the greatest series um we we had we had to do a lot of work and uh yeah owner did a good job uh hey whatever carry a bit beat uh his demons right he beat barrel he beat his friend who faker gift the thumbs up okay then we don't say anything uh yeah sorry for kt it's not over yet right they go into the regional um but honestly it's just so genji T1, Hangwa, life. They go to worlds like nearly 100%. There's like so unrealistic that they fumble and just don't make it, right? This is not even T1 biased or anything. They have 70 championship points from spring. They just, nah, they're not going to not make it, right? They're going to get a minimum of 50 points right now uh, because they're going to be at least, uh, what is it, third, fourth or something? No, fourth, whatever. Uh, at least, right? They're not going to make it, knock on wood. But that's that. So, uh, yeah. It's just going to be the question. Like, DK, they look good. But will they be yeah, good enough? Well, that's a conversation for a different day. Again, I hope you enjoyed this pretty long and exhausting video. Hope you had fun. And hope we see each other soon. Take care, my friends. Bye-bye.